Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's webinar. Uh, my name is Qasim Al Rafi, and today we will be going over um, the basics of our iTrack mobile app. Uh, this will be be geared towards the Android version of our app, but there are only some small distinctions between Android, iOS, and Windows. Um, mainly some name changes, but overall they all operate the same. Uh, we will be going over, <coughs> excuse me, how to download the app, um, navigation of the app. We will we will be doing a small tutorial form, um, and if we have time, we will be going over how to use the portal. And should there be any questions, as always, there is an open Q&A. And if you do want to jump in at any time, feel free to ask a question and I'll be able to answer as soon as I possibly can. Now, uh, without further ado, let's begin. There might be a bit of delay when I'm sharing the screen, but this is because I'm using my phone, so I'll try my best to to verbalize what I'm doing. Now, to download the iTrack mobile app, the first thing you want to do is go to the Play Store, which is this icon right here. Uh, if you cannot find it on your home screen, obviously try swiping left and right to find it, or search down in the search bar for the Play Store app. Let's try to make this full screen. From there, you will search for iTrack mobile. It is called iTrack 365 Safety and Compliance Platform. Now, this iTrack 365 kiosk, this is also one of our apps, but it has a lot of different uh, functionalities to it. So if you are just uh, you know, a site worker, if you're someone using our app, this won't do what you're expecting it to do. Uh, this app is meant for multiple, multiple users to log in um, with the same login. So for for your purposes you probably do not want to download this unless your system administrator is telling you to so this iTrack 365 safety and compliance platform is going to be the app you'd like to download so you click it click install and then you wait So you click open just before I do that. This resets. Um, it will pop up back on your home screen. So if you're going to be using this app a lot, make sure you put it in somewhere where it's easily accessible. Um, obviously, you could put it in a folder, but it takes longer to get to the app and accessibility is key. So back to what I was saying, go back into the app. It'll ask you for three permissions. It'll ask you to take pictures and record video in case you want to uh, share any attachments or uh, you know, take a picture of the incident, this has to be allowed. If you need to uh, upload a photo you've already taken prior, you need to give access to your photos, media, and files on your device. And finally, access this device's location. Uh, if, you worry, if you are worried about security, I do suggest going for the allow only while using the app. Or if you're more lax towards that, uh, towards that, you can just click allow all the time. I'll just use allow only while using the app. Now, let's say for, for some odd reason, you forget to um, you forget to give it permissions. You can do this in two different ways. You can either hold down the app and go into app info. Now, I am using the newest version of Android, so things might look different for you, but generally it's the same. You can go to permissions here and then allow these. I allow these three things. Now, if you click it, you can say deny or allow. Just make sure they're all pushed towards the allow. So the other way you can do this, if you swipe down the notification bar twice, this little settings button will be there, or you can access the settings. Oh, sorry about that. Or you can access the settings like you usually do, wherever the button is on your phone. Okay, so I'll go down. Down again, settings. Okay. This apps and notifications. You will see your recently opened apps here. So I check mobile is here, but if you have to search for it, you'll see all 123 apps. Scroll down all the way to I track mobile, and you get to that same screen I showed you before. So go back to the home screen. 
cool. So back to iTrack. Now you will be logging in with your email and your uh, password, but this pin password is not the same as you would log into for Outlook, for example, or even the portal. Um, it is a separate pin that is generated through um, through the backend system. So if you don't know it, uh, there are ways of finding it, but depending on your um, accessibility to the CRM, it's just best to contact your system administrator and they can distribute the password to you. So I've already have the password saved. So I'll sign in. Depending on how many forms there are in your system or how many forms you've tried using, this sync will take will, will vary. Uh, will, will vary. Cool. Um, you will get this um, the, this part this prompt. Now, if you're on site and let's say you're roaming, uh, it will ask you to download up 1.32 megabytes. So if you're worried about data charges. I uh, just click cancel for now because I'm at home. I will just download this in the background. For the most part, it's like documents and other uh, other things that need to be synced up. OK, so just a, just at a first glance here. Um, you have the activities page. This three, we call this the hamburger icon if I reference this in the video. This allows you to access the menu. So on, on the iOS version and the Windows version, I believe it's just called menu. You have this calendar button which shows you all the events happening over the month, as well as a sync button that just forces a sync between your app and uh, and your CRM. OK, without further ado, let's begin. So with the activities panel, you have uh, form tasks, events, um, training tasks, or anything that's sort of been assigned to you, right? Um, obviously here, the only thing that's been assigned to me are form tasks. And as you can see that I'm pretty far behind on this one. It was due on uh, December 2019. So I'll click the click the little uh, title here and the activity will open up. The form task will open up or corrective action if that's the verbiage used at your uh, company. It'll tell you a bit about it, tell you what you need to do. It'll say when it's due. Obviously we're pretty late, late here. You can press complete. Uh, you can say, okay, I really completed this on the April 15th, but I haven't submitted it for a week. And you can say that I did what was required. Click done. Okay. And then once you go back, you'll see that the little check marks here and that you've actually completed the form task that was assigned to you. I believe next time you sync, this will no, no longer show, um, but it will send up to the CRM and your supervisors, whoever assigns you this task, we'll see that you have completed it. Um, now just a heads up, you might you may not see procedures, you may not see entered forms or documents. It all depends on the rules you have um, with your company. Now this add form or process flows as we slowly move away from the verbiage of form will um, will allow you to enter any incident report, any spill release, any daily checkup, any work site inspection. So any form that your your company has inserted into iTrack, this is where you'll actually be able to fill it out. Now these are separated into uh, form groups. So if I click health and safety, all the health and safety forms uh, will, will appear. If I click inspections, all the inspections and so on and so forth. Right um, from there you can click a form. Class, you have the classification. So if we're doing a incident and that incident was an injury, click yes. And then the incident form properly opens up. We'll jump into this in the later part of the uh, webinar though, as I have a tutorial form already built out. So secondly, you have this entered form section. Now, as you can know, I just I did just create an incident form. So this little in progress button is closed. I can click the incident again, and even though I backed out, I can open that form that I just uh, I just created and start filling it out again should I need to. The other um, the other uh, statuses you might see on this um, on in this in the section are in progress, requested, or in progress, completed, sending, sent, and received. So, for example, if I click 
and then form type testing, a selective classification. I just click yes. It'll tell you, are you sure? If you complete this form, it'll automatically upload to the server. Now, if you are on site and you were, are worried about um, data charges coming to you, there are ways around this. And I'll mention how to get that. But as I said, I'm still working from home, so I'll just click yes. It will sync again. Now, if I go back to the entered form section, you can see that it is properly sending and sent. Um, and then if I come back in maybe a minute, two minutes, depending on how fast your internet speed is, it'll actually be sent to the uh, the completed section. So if I went to if I go to advanced and I scroll down a bit and I see this prevents automatic upload of completed forms, and I check that because I'm worried about data charges coming. Okay, and then I go back into a form. And I submit that same exact form. It now says completing this form will upload it to the server during the next sync. So if you are worried about going to site and you're getting it charged again, as I mentioned, you click yes, go back into entered forms. And now you can see that that form was completed. You can no longer change it. And it is just waiting for you to press this little sync button here. And then this one will be sent to sending sent. So just monitoring the the, the forms of the process flows that you are sending and making sure that um, should there be any error, they actually sh will show up in this little section over here. So if I go back to entered forms again, you can see here that the completed section is gone. And instead, that second form type testing one is now there. Now, procedures and competency, um, not a lot of clientele use this feature net because it's relatively new, but if you're um, if your company is one that uses it, this is where you're able to go into the procedure section, see a procedure that maybe was assigned to you, you press it, and then you can say, okay, it applies to everyone in oil and gas rig one. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, effective same date, the steps are here. You have to acknowledge the steps and you say, I've acknowledged that I review this procedure and all the steps. So now you're telling your company that, yes, I've went through the procedure of, um, of this test one and I'm able to properly operate X machine, X, whatever it may be, right? Uh, similar to competency, unfortunately, there is no data on this user, so I can't showcase this just yet. And then the last section you might see is documents. You have, these are called document libraries, right? So if I go into the test library, for example, this is called a document item. And if I go in the doc library, there are some folders within that library that can also contain items. Now, if you were to click an item, so I'll click Excel 97, it opens up the 97 Excel test. It might download it. So if you are worried about that, you should be wary of it and able to either edit it, view it, or whatever permissions were given to this document. Uh, this is really helpful when it comes to training material or if you're um, about to operate something and you know the and you know the the how to guide is in this document folder, that's when you jump in there and just make sure that you are following everything per the manual. Finally, this advanced section, this will tell you what version you're on. Uh, this is a beta beta. Uh, app right now, so you won't be able to see this version specifically, but you want to make sure that you're always up to date as we are constantly fixing bugs. It'll tell you which user you're logged into, which company you're with, right, and some other things. Now, this does get a bit more uh, in depth. So, for example, right now we see that the device business unit is oil and gas drilling rigs, rig two. And we see that the device facility, so if I go in here and I say, okay, I want the device facility to be called the cloning facility. Obviously, your list would be longer, but since it's a test account, we don't have too many things. You're able to filter the device business unit and the device facility and automatically fill out that field um, when, you, when, you, when you create a new process flow. So for example, if I go back into add form and I go back into the, my, my, my main test, which was NN form type, I go here and I go here. I scroll down. Okay. 
You can see here that that foreign business unit was oil and gas drilling rigs. I'm not sure why the facility wasn't uploaded, but that would also be uploaded as well. So instead of me having to click here and select rig two or rig one, it just automatically does it for me based on that advanced section. And now let's say you accidentally clicked on a process flow and you want to get rid of it. Just click this delete button and it's forever gone. So you don't have to worry about uploading to the server. Now, if you are on site and you are still worried about your uh, your data charges coming through, you want to make sure that your attachment size is small. Um, you can make it full, large, medium, or small. Now, let's say it was a huge incident. Um, it is best practice just to go full to make sure that the resolution doesn't change or you, they, once it does get shipped back into the CRM, um, then nothing gets lost due to quality. But for the most part, keep it at small. This prevents automatic upload of completed forms. These two things are the things you really want to uh, watch out for when you have data charges. Um, and then finally, if you really don't want to use cellular data, you can just uh, unclick it totally. Now the last thing in the advanced section would be this change user section or this resync all. So at this, these two buttons, if I'm not mistaken, are synonymous. This is just a bigger one. Um, so let's say you're in the add form section. This will do what this does. But if you really want to make sure that um, the app is working properly, just click this button in this advanced section. Now let's say you, open, you, you find an iPad at work. Uh, and it's somebody else has logged into it. You just click this change user button. It'll prompt you that all data will be removed. So if you still have an in progress form, um, I believe as well as a completed form, you actually lose that data. So make sure that everything was synced up before you um, change your user. So I'll change it anyways. It resets the app. QA. And then I can log into my second user here. Okay. Now see how I lost the ability to see procedures and competencies. That's just because my uh, this this company here does not does not have that ability, nor does that user uh, have the rules to see them. So here I'm in our COVID environment. Um, if you guys want more information on COVID-19 process flows, um, please check out our previous webinar. I believe it was last week's um, or email support at neosystems.com and we can uh, definitely get you in touch. Now, these are all called form groups, as I mentioned. So this click here to learn about process flows and self-training form. Now, just a couple things when it comes to the glossary. So a field option, right, is this little button here. This entered by, this created on date. These are all field options, very simple controls, right? Where a control, this with a verb gets a bit confusing, um, is a lot more advanced. So this little edit button here has an inspection. And this inspection has, you sort of go two, three levels deep. So it gets a bit more advanced. Um, in the portal, this does make a difference. So if I did want to access this inspection in the portal, I would have to save, but I might get into that if time persists. But for the most part, this is a field option and the other one was called a control. Now this red asterisk or in mobile, uh, the entire title just gets uh, uh, colored red, sorry. Um, if I try to submit right now, you'll see a bunch of errors uh, appearing, which is because every Every title in red means it's required. Therefore, everything in this field and this form is required. Finally, this grayed out option. So if I scroll down and I where was it? Okay. I guess it doesn't work for mobile. So there, there might there might be some um, field options that are just grayed out, and you can already see the date. Um, this one will allow you to, if you click it, you're able to change this one, change this one. But if this was grayed out and this little text here was also grayed out with this time, that means that that field option is read only and there's nothing you can do to change it. Now, unfortunately I can't show it to you. I don't know what happened, but that's the idea behind it. And finally, the process status, that's more for the portal, but that just means uh, I'll get to that if time persists. So. You entered by, you know, my name is uh, John Williams, for example. I'm creating this date on today, creating the date and time today. So 223, if I need to be persistent, right? 
Um, if you want to enter, you also have the ability to enter text. So I am entering a test form. Right, and it just pops up here. So this is called a yes no field option. Um, you have it, you can use it in two different ways. You can do this as a um, are you completing this form, for example, yes or no, or you can use it as a uh, selection display, section display. So if I were to click no on this yes no option, nothing happens, right? But since the question is select yes to show more information, and I clicked yes, as you can see, the more information section display now appears, right? And it says by selecting yes, you've made the section appear. So some field options have this capability, and it really adds uh, a different layer to your process flow. And it really helps organize it because if I didn't have this option, but someone did not need more information, uh, it would just be a, a more convoluted process. So I'll click no just to keep it short. Now you have this um, inspection control. So if I were to click edit here, you can say inspection question one, tap it, yes, no, not available, or inspection question two, yes, no, not available. All right, so if I say no, it automatically becomes red, and there are a bit more capabilities in the portal. Like I said, I'll get to that as time persists. Right, you see it's filled out correctly by this check mark. You back out, and you're good to go. All right, now this employee list control. Um, so the question is, which employees are you working with? You're able to add employees from the employee list to that form. All right, so, so to use this control, click add employee. And you can say, you know, I was working with Rodrigo, Rodrigo Joseph and um, Smith James, for example. Click enter and you can see their names will appear over here. And then this is called a people control. So it's a bit different than the employee controls or the employees are people you're working with. Whereas the people control, I can say, OK, I met with Tom Makarov. And he works at, for example, fake company. One, two, three. His email is phone number in case you need to get in touch with him. And said he came in to the office today to grab supplies, for example. Right. Click yes. And now his name now shows there. Finally, this item list control. I like it to call it as all, all in one, where you're able to add rows of text, numbers, yes, no's, risk hazards, risk has risks hazards and so much more right so if i click add item you're able to see okay, i can add an employee here so just i'll click industrial stampede mobile you're able to select yes or no add some text even add a whole number All right and that's sort of the the main the, the majority of the controls you'll see over the process flows um the biggest ones being this inspection control, this employee list, and this item list. So you'll see those a lot as you're just navigating uh, your company's process flows. Now let's say you want to see this as a PDF. You just click this little PDF button. It'll open with a separate app. And you guys, you can see here that entered by John Williams created on this date. In case you want to take some uh, some nicer screenshots, right? Obviously, if, if your phone for some reason was connected to a printer or if you're using a tablet, you can actually just send to PDF. You should be able to print it here, download, send it to whoever you need to. All right, let's go back, complete it, upload it to the server. As I said, it will sync. And then if I go here, go to entered forms, I'll be able to wait until it goes into received. Now I'll just quickly go into the portal just because there were a couple differences between the portal and the app. So this is the iTrack portal. If you're on um, if you're on cloud, you'll see this Azure websites.net URL. And if you're on premises, it might be something as iTrack.ca slash your company's name. So this is different than the CRM in case you guys are also using the CRM. As I mentioned, these are all the form groups. If you don't know which form group your form is in, you can actually expand them all, right? And you're able to select whichever form or process flow you want. But we know we want to go into the self-training form here. 
And then we see here that says click on new form. So uh, there, there is a bunch of text here that also uh, helps you walk through this form. All right, so as you can see here, instead of being all red like the mobile, that you have just these little asterisks here beside the titles, which means that these options or controls are actually all um, required before you can submit the form. So if I go to submit the form, it'll give you the X and it'll actually tell you which ones are required over here. Okay. Um, this grayed out option, this is right here. As you can see, I cannot edit this option as well at all, and it was um, automatically filled by itself. Finally, these little controls here, um, it says here you must save the form before you can actually use these records. So if I have to save it, wait a bit, depending on how many controls there are, the longer it takes. Right, so all the controls are pretty much the same as the app, by the way, which is why I'm skipping over them. Right, they're all very, very simple. Right, um, now this inspection control may look a bit different. So as you see here, inspection question one, it says green for yes, red for no, gray for NA. Um, let's say you're filling out an inspection over a spill and you want to take a picture of the spill. You can click this little down arrow here and add an attachment. Or let's say I want to add an action saying clean up mess. Um, and you want to assign this to fire and safety mobile, for example, the users will show up longer. You say there is a mess in lunchroom three, for example, right? You can say when it's due, give it a priority, right? Request it and then save and close it. And this one actually now goes, once it loads, it will link to that same inspection question. Don't know why it's taking so long, so X out of it. Or if you want to take a picture, it's just a simple attachment here. We'll do it right. So subject, picture of test, comments, here's the mess. And then you send a select a file to upload it. Okay, close out of that. And then the employee list control, these are all similar to how the mobile one was. The only difference is you click a name and you actually drag it to the right by using this button instead of double clicking or dragging like that. If you, let's say you accidentally clicked Miller Richard, you can just go back using the remove button and go back and forth. And then this item list control is also very similar to the mobile app. So there are slight differences between the, uh, there are slight differences between the mobile app and the portal, but overall it's the same. I'm just gonna quickly complete it. That way I can submit it and show you guys the next part of the portal. Alright, so close. From there, I can submit it. Nope. Yes, yes. Close. Submit. Okay, so now you see here that there's this view button over here, and this is very similar to the entered forms, right? Where I'm able to see all the active process flows. Um, this, these views might depend on um, your ownership. So let's say um, my coworker Tom submits a form when we're on equal standings in terms of company hierarchy. I may not be able to see his forms. It all just depends on the way your company set it up. But if you go to here to the inactive ones, we can see that the one I just filled out, 22nd, is now here. If I want to go into it, print it out, or send it to anybody, I'm able to actually go back and review what I wrote. And then from there, let's say you only want to see, for example, a company compliance form that's active, you're able to see that view as well. So these views are set up by your company, 
and you're able to just go and use the filters created. The last thing I want to show you here is we go back to the active ones and let's say I only want to see when Patricia has entered a form. I can filter by Patricia if I spelled that correctly <laughs> and then you'll see the forms uh, linked to her. So if, you, if you're sitting there and you're wondering why aren't all the forms showing or I entered a form and it's not here, just make sure that you actually delete all the filters you have or just refresh the page. And then finally, the activity section, which is also very similar to um, the mobile app, just a couple differences. These are all your form tasks. You're able to click it, do the same thing. You say, okay, I completed it uh, today. The status is now completed. And then you save and close, all right? And this disappears from this little view here. And you're saying that, yes, I've completed this. Corrective action. This active process flows button here. These are all quick links. So let's say you're working through your, uh, your, your process flow and you want to contact support, for example. You can click here and it's telling us how you can contact Neo Systems. You want to access a Power BI report. It takes you to the Power BI page and so on and so forth, all right? So that's, for the most part, the portal. As you can see, very minor differences, but they still make up for a different way. Uh, I do apologize for going a bit over time. Hope that didn't bother anybody. Uh, and if there's any questions, I'll be opening it up for five minutes to see, to answer your questions.